So now you should have practiced creating the logic for finding out whether we have a winner. I've seen some solutions. Some of you are still working on it. But I would like to do something which I've never done before because it's brand new and you are the first class with whom I would like to discuss this. Who has heard from GitHub Copilot? Okay, two, three. Can anybody describe what GitHub Copilot is? Complete your code based on the AI code that has been written in the past. Exactly. GitHub Copilot is AI. AI means that you have an artificial intelligence deep network and this network has been trained with hundreds of thousands, even millions of lines of code of high quality, uh, high quality software out in GitHub. This is what GitHub Copilot is. Have I ever heard from DALI? This artificial intelligence thing that can create drawings and pictures. Yeah, have you heard from that? It's similar like that, but for coders. And the problem for us as schools is that GitHub Copilot is simply too good. If you use GitHub Copilot, the whole kind of programming as we have been teaching it for years, you as coders, your life will be different. I'm not exaggerating. GitHub Copilot turns coding upside down. And it is just the beginning what we see here. Let me show you what GitHub Copilot can do. I have GitHub Copilot. Please take a look at my screen. Tab done. GitHub Copilot is smart enough to recognize, to understand what our program does. It recognizes it, that this is tic-tac-toe. It reads, believe it or not, the documentation that I've written on top of this function. It understands how our variables are called and it will generate the entire algorithm with a single tab. It's really, really strange. I have been using GitHub Copilot for more than half a year now. I was in the beta program, I used it, I loved it and now I pay for it because I cannot live without it anymore really, in my professional life. It's not just code that we have here. It's also the documentation. See? Get up. I don't need to type anything. See that? In this case, GitHub Copilot read the algorithm and came up with the descriptive information what this algorithm does. And I just have to press tab. What does that mean for the future of coding? What does that mean for you as programmers? That means that in many cases, you can simply rely on artificial intelligence to do quite a bit of coding for you. Especially when you do some algorithmic things which are not super, super complicated. Give me a second, I would like to finish this thought. If you are writing an algorithm that is super innovative. Never anybody in this world has ever thought of this algorithm. Then it's very likely that GitHub Copilot cannot help you. Because artificial intelligence means that it is trained on existing code bases. But believe me, in many cases, you as developers will do things that are kind of similar to what other developers did already. How often did you struggle in any programming language with Oh, how do I read line by line from a text file in this programming language? You will never ever think about that again. Just write a single line of comment, read line by line from file, go in the next line and GitHub Copilot will say boom. <coughs> this is really important and to be honest, I'm not sure how we should, I'm not fully sure how we should deal with that in teaching. Because in a test, you should definitely be able to write code like that. And I will tell you how I will handle it in this class. I will not allow Copilot when I explicitly want to check whether you are able to write algorithms. So I will check during the test whether you haven't enabled GitHub Copilot. I can force you to disable it. 
That is possible. GitHub Copilot can be disabled, definitely. But I, I want you to know that this tool exists. And by the way, if you are a student in this school and you have a student email address, you can get a student account from GitHub and the student account has Copilot license built in. So you can get it if you want. You can use it if you want. But the critical thing, why it isn't a perfect solution, I mean, I, I could stop asking you for writing algorithms, right? Because Copilot will do it for you. Why should you use it? The thing is, Copilot isn't 100% correct. I've been using it for more than half a year now, and I can tell you the suggestions are great. But in many cases, there are some mistakes in the generated code. And those mistakes are subtle. They are not huge mistakes. The code isn't rubbish. It's good, but it has some flaws. And that's the problem with Copilot. If you are really good, it is the perfect tool for you. It's like a chainsaw. You can very quickly um, a, a, a cut down trees with a motorized chainsaw, but you can also very quickly um, saw away your leg with a motorized chainsaw. Ah, it's not a perfect solution, but it's a very good solution. The, the reason why I, at the first, uh, this year in the first time, where I'm really actively talking about, um, about GitHub Copilot is because I really believe that tools like this will shape the jobs of programmers in the future. The typical algorithms will no longer be the problem. More and more, these AI tools will be able to generate code for you if you are able to tell the system what you want. So I tell you what I, in my everyday programming, do. I turned around the, kind, uh, the, the process how I write code. I focus more on first writing the comments and documentation of my functions, because if I write a good documentation up here, it's very likely that GitHub Copilot can up with the code for it. Up until now, I was writing the algorithm and then I wrote the documentation. Now I turn it upside down and it works really good. So when you get homeworks from me, I cannot check whether you created this homework with Copilot or without Copilot. I, I cannot verify it. Copilot even does not generate the same algorithm over and over again. So if you use Copilot and you use Copilot in your homework, it's very likely that you have two different code bases. So I cannot even check the, ident the identity of your code because it comes up with different code bases, at least in a non-trivial algorithm. If it's very, very trivial, it's naturally the same. Understand what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's okay for me, and you have the okay, to experiment with Copilot, to try it, to learn to use it, because it's a tool. I would never, ever allow first grade students in this school to use Copilot, because they have to learn the basics. But you're now in the fourth grade. You've learned many basics of coding. So now you can use powerful tools. So give it a try. You don't, you, you, you don't need to try it if you don't want to. That's perfectly fine. But if you want to try it, try it. But word of warning, don't rely on Copilot. First, in the tests, you are not going to be allowed to use it. In the Matura, the Copilot will not be there. And third, the Copilot will sometimes generate rubbish. And you must be able to fix it. Now, this was, so, what do you think about Copilot when you see it like that? That's a good thing. Focus on putting things together. Copilot will never come up with a complete solution for you. You as a developer, you think more in which tools do I use, which libraries do I use. You translate the requirements of the user into technical requirements. You have to do data structure design. You have to think of whether you use such a data structure or a different data structure to store your data. But then the simple algorithms, the thing that you do over and over again, these things can be generated. That's true. But that's just the beginning. Copilot was launched a few weeks ago. It's now in version one. What do you think how Copilot will look like in 2025? Um, there are big drawbacks of Copilot 2. 
Think about what GitHub does. GitHub takes open source software where many people have spent unpaid endless hours to generate code. And then they take this code and they train an artificial intelligence on this code that they didn't pay for and they get an artificial intelligence tool like Copilot. And then they sell it. They earn money with it. Is that okay? Is it okay that they build a tool based on open source software, again, that they didn't pay for? It's open source, right? From a license perspective, it's perfectly okay what they do. But is it ethical? It depends. Some people say yes, because GitHub gives all open source tools free access to GitHub, free access to GitHub Actions. Everything is free for open source projects on GitHub. So they really pay for these open source tools, but not directly, but indirectly. So it's okay. Other people say it's not okay. They would have to sponsor these open source tools so that they get a kind of license to use it. Yes, question. The second criticism of GitHub Copilot is that if you write code, they obviously analyze this code, they send this code, at least partly, somewhere that you don't have control over, and then you get back some nice suggestions. Imagine that you are, that you are just inventing something really groundbreakingly new. Do you really want to send this code to GitHub, meaning Microsoft or somebody else? Probably not, right? <coughs> there are settings where you can avoid sending code to somewhere else to get suggestions. That's possible. You can always configure that. But you have to deal with that, especially if you are in a really critical environment where you have to deal with uh, intellectual property on an algorithm, uh, algorithmic level. You wanted to say something? Or? Uh, yeah, the thing with if you can turn it off so it's private. Yes, you can. I told you that. It's possible to turn it off, but you have to do it. You have to think about it. Okay? So very nice. I like that. I hope this was interesting. I thought today in the evening we don't want to spend whole, uh, the entire day hardcore coding stuff. Think about it, what that means. Try it. Play with it. Try to read a little bit about it. And maybe if somebody wants to change his or her um, uh, lightning talk, feel free to take GitHub Copilot or other, there are also open source alternatives to GitHub Copilot, um, as, as a lightning talk. I would be perfectly happy with that. Now, um, we are nearly done. Tomorrow we will finish this level two and we will switch to level three. Level three will uh, bring you completely new topics in Angular. We'll talk about Angular services. So we will extract the business logic out of the component into a service and I will t tell you something about dependency injection and so on and so on. It's really an interesting topic. However, I have a homework for you. Uh, I will tell you more uh, tomorrow, but is this the right one? No, that is not the right one. This is the right one. Here it is. This is the first homework. And this homework will be an active homework for the next few weeks. Until next week, I ask you to implement the first two levels of this example. And guess what? It's not Connect 3, but it's Connect 4. Viergewind in German. You all know the Viergewind game? Yep. Exactly. You drop in the coins, and the first one who has four in a row, diagonal or uh, stacked on each other, wins. That is Connect 4. And I want you to implement Connect 4 level 1, level 2, and so on. I already created a base solution, and you see, you have level one, two, three, four, five. So the whole CSS stuff, I solved it for you. You can focus on TypeScript, Angular, HTML, bindings, things like that. But how do we do that? In, in this, or I, I can send it to you in Discord. I will send it to you in Discord after the, the talk. You don't need to write it down, but you can if you want. Have you ever heard about GitHub Classroom? Yeah. Yes, no, some of you? Good. I will heavily use GitHub Classroom. That means that you go to this URL. I will post it in Discord, as I said before, in a minute. You get, go to this URL, you sign in with your GitHub account, and then you just say accept assignment. 
That will give you a new GitHub repository. It will automatically copy my starter code into this, this folder. You simply clone this thing and you code. And when you want to hand in your code, your homework, you simply commit the code to GitHub. I can give you feedback via comments via GitHub. So whenever I take a look at your code, I can give you detailed feedback on each line and you will immediately be notified via email and you can take a look at what I told you about this code. Does it make sense? I hope so. It works really well. I've been doing that for many, many years and it works really well. So this will be the exercise we learn in the Connect 3 and you practice in the Connect 4. Clear? So homework until next week, just level one and two. One is nearly done. I think it's completely done. It's just the CSS. You have to simply read it. And level two is just the basic business logic. Set winner detection on connect four. It's not complicated. It's the same as you had before, but you have to find four and not three. Good? Are we good? Read the documentation. I made it easier for you. Level two is not a huge area. Level two is just connect four on a four by four square. So you can still do the simple ifs for level two. And then it's getting more complicated. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.